Hey, welcome, and today I'd like to kick this year off with a new video. Uh, this is a music production tip video. It's regarding keyboard techniques that you can uh, apply for your orchestral MIDI instruments. As you know, playing uh, virtual strings, brass, woodwinds, percussion, and choir um, all require a different approach than you would normally playing on a piano. So these are um, going to be ranging from common techniques that you might learn on the piano um, all the way to more un unconventional techniques that are specifically for the MIDI controller. So the first technique is called the crossover. Crossovers are very important for all your scales, whether it's a major, minor, or the chromatic. Right? So if you're playing uh, any of those, you will always cross over. What crossover basically is um, when your thumb goes under your finger to go up with your right hand, or it, uh, you are crossing over your thumb if you are going down with your right hand. So for example, doing something like that, going down, going up, and so on. This actually applies also with the um, with arpeggios. And so just to demonstrate this in context, I will show you that, give you an example. Uh, crossovers are one of the most crucial techniques to really master if you're going to play any um, orchestral instrument. Next technique is called a finger substitution and this is very useful uh, when you are jumping up to a very high note um, and you have to switch fingers out and this what, what it does is it involves replacing one finger let's say I'm depressing a finger down like so and then if I want to switch fingers out so that I can hit another finger, I'm switching it out while I'm depressing that note down. So for instance, um, if I'm going like that, I am quickly replacing my middle finger with the thumb while holding it down. This is called a finger substitution and uh, very useful. So I will play that in context. All right, so the next technique is a one-handed repeated note. Now what, what I mean by that is uh, you are playing the same note repeatedly in a very fast way okay. now this works really well for your short articulations for your brass strings woodwinds even percussion so uh, the way to achieve this is using your middle index and your thumb to alternate between them now it doesn't uh, have to always be these three fingers can also go up into your uh, fourth finger as well. The most important thing is stay relaxed. Um, you can look up different videos on techniques on how to achieve um, a, a very um, um, relaxed way of playing repeated notes to further explore. So here is an example of that in context. The next technique is more unconventional. It's what I like to call the one finger mallet technique. And um, if you remember chopsticks. It's the same idea. So it's 
pretend that you are playing a mallet instrument like a xylophone and you're holding two mallets um, so one on each hand if you are pretending to do that you can uh, achieve a different type of sound for your spiccato lines uh, like this Or even with epic trailer toms. Alright, the fifth technique is the one-handed octaves. And so um, this works really well when you're doubling up a bass line to beef up the uh, cellos with a double bass. Or if it's brass, you can double it up as well. So. Um, here is an example of that in context. Alternatively, you can also put your uh, index finger in there and add a fifth as well. So that is very useful for um, bass lines. Uh, but not only bass lines for your melodies if you're wanting to um, also double up on that. All right, the sixth technique is called the pedaling. And the pedaling isn't anything new um, in terms of your piano, but um, this is a little bit different in context of strings um, and other instruments. So for instance, if I am playing something, um, I can I can press all my notes down. So in this case, I'm pressing six notes, and then I'm gonna just hold down the, the pedal. This works well if you are sketching something and uh, you want to move across your keyboard quickly and hold down notes as you go. So here's an example of that in context. And the last tip is regarding using your faders and your wheels for your MIDI data. So um, MIDI will uh, come in different uh, various options. You have your notes and then you have your continuous controller or CC data. So CC um, can control various things like your, your um, expression, your, uh, your dynamic crossfades, and your volume. So, and there are other things. Um, in certain libraries, there are breadth. Um, the CC2 will control vibrato uh, for um, libraries such as Cinemax Studio Strings. Or uh, with Spitfire stuff, um, you have your CC14 and CC21 for vibrato. Now, um, I'm just going to focus on the main ones. Um, so, most libraries will have options to manipulate your sounds with the CC1 and CC11. Um, CC1 is generally for your crossfades, your dynamic crossfades. And for instance, if I am playing Jaeger's trombone, this sample that I'm triggering right now around here in this lower quadrant is um, a piano type of sample. It's, it's, um, it's not as brassy as you normally would think a bit, uh, like a trailer trombone would sound like. And so if I go up all the way top, this triggers the other uh, cross of the dynamic uh, sample. So uh, with that, the crossfades happen generally around here. As you can hear, it gets more tinny and brassy sounding. And the other uh, CC11 fader is actually uh, just controls, relatively speaking, your volume. Everything here will sound relatively uh, uh, softer, but you'll have a little bit more room to grow. And if I go all the way up here, 
that sounds more drastic in a sense. So this is think of the CC11 as a more micro level volume level, and then your CC7, which is should be set more static um, most of the time as your macro volume level. Okay, and um, I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now with a short piece on how that would look inside of here. So I hope this video has shown some useful methods that you can use for your, your next composition uh, when you're working with the orchestral libraries. Uh, if there's something that you'd like to learn more, uh, whether it's the music production side or the composition side of things, I do offer private lessons one-on-one -on -one through Zoom and we can go over a lot of these subjects more in depth. You can reach out to me at my uh, email in the link in the description below. Also, I'd like to make one more announcement here. I've written a book. It's called 10 Tips on Becoming a Better Composer. It's a mini guide that will show you a lot of valuable lessons I've learned as a composer that will, I think will help you along your way. You can get a free copy if you click on the link in the description below as well. If you want to see more videos, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the like button to help me out in the future. I will talk to you later.